In this video, we are going to test our transaction broadcast endpoint and our transaction endpoint to make sure that they are both working together correctly. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to connect all of our nodes together to make a network. And you might remember how to do this on your own, but I'm just going to run you through this again real quick just as a refresher. So in order to connect all of these nodes together, we'll go over to Postman and we want to hit the register and broadcast node route. And it can be on any of your nodes, but for us we're going to use 3001. And inside of the body, we want to add a new node to our network by passing in its URL. So let's start with our second node and let's send this request. And our results look like, cool, it was successful. Let's connect the third node now and send that. Good. And the fourth node now, good. And the fifth node now, good. So all of these requests looked like they worked. And if we head over to the browser and we refresh all of these nodes, we can see that we have all of the nodes in our network are present. And this is our first node looks good. Second node looks good. Third node is good. Fourth node is good. And our fifth node is good. So we have successfully created our decentralized blockchain network. And it was pretty easy, which was cool. We built out some pretty powerful endpoints that do that functionality for us. Okay, so now let's get back to the purpose of this video, which is to test our transaction broadcast endpoint and our transaction endpoint. So now that we have a blockchain network set up, let's create a transaction and send it to our transaction broadcast endpoint. So now we want to hit our transaction broadcast endpoint. And let's start by hitting our first node on 3001. We want to hit the endpoint transaction slash broadcast. And all we want to do is send in some data as a transaction. So I have some leftover data here from a previous transaction. And you can take a minute right now to fill in your own data. It doesn't really matter what it is just needs to have the amount, sender, and recipient. So once we have our transaction data, let's send this request. Cool. So we got the note that our transaction was created and broadcast successfully. So now if we go over to our browser, we should have this transaction that we just created present on every single one of our nodes because it should have been broadcast throughout our entire network. Let's see if that worked. So we sent the broadcast request to this first node. So let's refresh it. Cool. So inside of our pending transactions array, we have one new transaction. And as you can tell, the new transaction was created and it also has a transaction ID now which starts with A880. So now if we go over to the next node in our network, this is where we can see if the broadcast actually worked. We should have the same transaction present inside of the pending transactions on this node. Let's see. Cool. So we have the same pending transaction present, which is awesome. And we can tell it's the same transaction because it has the same exact transaction ID that starts with A880. Let's check the next node to see if it received this transaction as well. Perfect. The transaction is present here too. And on our fourth node, let's refresh this. The transaction is here, that's good. And finally, the fifth node. 
The transaction is present here as well. Perfect. So this transaction that we created was broadcast to our entire blockchain network successfully, which is pretty cool. Every node inside of our blockchain network is now aware that a new transaction was created. Let's do another example. This time we'll send the amounts of 500 Bitcoin. And we can change this address to some other random string that doesn't really matter right now. And this address to a different random string. Cool. Now let's send this request to our node that's hosted on localhost 3004. Now this shouldn't make a difference which node we send this request to because our broadcast is sending our transaction to all of the nodes inside of our network. So this request should work just like the last one did. Let's see. Cool. It looks like our transaction was broadcast successfully, and let's make sure that's true. So on our first node, we should have another transaction present here. Let's see. Cool. We have the transaction that we just created present here as well, with the amount of 500 Bitcoin. And this transaction has an ID that starts with 286E. So we can check that we have the same transaction on all the other nodes as well. So if we go to node 2 and refresh this, we have this same transaction present here. That's good. On the third node, we can refresh this. Our new transaction is present here as well. On the fourth node, refresh this. The transaction is present here, and on our fifth node, we'll refresh this, and the transaction is present here as well. Awesome. So it looks like our transaction broadcast endpoint and our transaction endpoint are both working just as they should, which is pretty cool. We are essentially creating new transactions and broadcasting them to our entire decentralized blockchain network, which is pretty awesome if you think about it. Okay, in the next video, we will continue synchronizing our network by refactoring our mine endpoint so that it will broadcast the new blocks that are created to our entire network. I'll see you in the next video.